Hate the leaker, love the leak? We're feeding the wrong debate. This is the Monday Line. I'm Dennis Campbell. The Fox News and the right have been banging the Edward Snowden as a traitor drum slowly for more than a month. The recent announcement by Russian Prime Minister Putin to grant fugitive NSA operative Edward Snowden asylum for one year sent off howls of outrage from the U.S. and threatened to harm U.S.-Russia relations. Senator Chuck Schumer took to the rostrum to proclaim the Russian leader was, quote, poking a stick in the eye of the USA, close quote, with his actions. Now, we know Putin is not a USA fan. He grew up in the KGB during the Cold War, where we were mortal enemies. And he remains angry the U.S. did nothing to help Russia financially in the 1980s, when the Soviet Union fell, to get back on its feet. Putin intends to use Russia's oil and mineral wealth as a cudgel whenever he can to get whatever he wants. And that detente thing, well, it's never really worked for him. Any chance he can rattle the USA's cage, he will. So it begs the real question, what is a traitor and what does the act look like? Now, I know I'm certainly confused in any attempt to paint the Manning or Snowden situations with a puritanical right versus wrong, straight down the middle, black or white brush, just muddles the situation. Maybe if the pundits all took a step back, applied some shades of gray nuance, then might we get to the right questions and get them on the table. The recently concluded Bradley Manning trial showed remarkably, some might say astoundingly, judicial restraint. The military judge actually followed law versus internal opinion and found the young army private guilty of sharing classified documents with WikiLeaks, but he fell short of convicting him of aiding the enemy, a potential death penalty charge. Bradley Manning was tortured whilst in military prison, yet showed signs throughout of conscience in his objections and actions. The U.S. military simply wanted to end him. His evidence was damaging, and the real crime was one of embarrassment. And what no one speaks of is how the videos and documents he released showed the U.S. potentially committing war crimes against a group of Iraqi men, shooting them down like in a video game and laughing their way through the attack. Further documents embarrassed U.S. diplomats for a stunning level of hubris and hypocrisy whilst also breaking local laws. Now, Snowden's time release information continues to baffle U.S. authorities because everything shows he had a conscience as well. Almost weekly, a new revelation appears to vindicate him and prove his point, yet it goes underreported. No one is talking about the laws broken by the USA while spying on, while spying on everybody all of the time. The real intelligence breach came to a head when this weekend German can Germany cancelled an anti-terrorism sharing info agreement out of anger that the U.S. was busily spying on German citizens. Yet none of the U.S. left's potential leaders and candidates, from Hillary Clinton to Elizabeth Warren, are talking about the real story beyond Snowden, the fugitive. Now, while I agree he should come home and face trial, I understand why he dare not after watching the Manning debacle. Manning and Snowden indeed broke the law. So did Daniel Ellsberg, releasing the Pentagon Papers. Ellsberg was later found not guilty. Manning and Snowden will spend the rest of their lives looking over their shoulders for drones. The government desperately wants to set an example with these two and send a message. But what happens to freedom of speech and democracy when people of conscience take a stand and blow the whistle against government law-breaking? Where is their due process? What happens when laws are constantly reconstructed in such a way to prevent the release of any data without someone then breaking the law? If the government is indeed breaking the law, how and when are they held accountable for their actions? Now, blaming it on Gen Xers and their conscience is a cheap trick that plays to the conservative base and avoids accountability. Manning and Snowden are not traitors. They're also not heroes because heroes come back and face the music. They are, though, the vehicles for this serious discussion to take place. The Obama administration has been vigilantly pursuing and fighting leakers of all kinds in and outside of government and the working press. But without a free press, how can any citizen hold their government to account? And with a press controlled by a handful of corporate interests, complicit reporters spew corporate talking points and paper over real issues with spin. Now, how does this serve humanity if corporations can do as they please when they please. 
Where does it end, and how can anyone stand up and object if Big Brother is constantly watching and listening? That's the debate we should be having. Manning and Snowden are the conduits to the citizenry taking back control of their government. Unless and until those handling this data feel safe to show when their government is willfully breaking the law, you don't have anything resembling a democracy. So hate the leaker, love the leak. Indeed.